Right, no. You know what, George? You know, as crazy as it sounds, you know, most people when they're involved in explosions just walk, you know, go to hospital, you know, go to the police. You decide you're going to be your crimes. So, so, solve the crime. You know, a, a lawyer solving a crime that's almost as, as ridiculous as, I don't know, uh, an archaeologist trying to save the world. Oh, wait a minute, hang on. Um, yeah. Oh wow. Almost as ridiculous as a oh, my as a biker getting involved in a murder yeah. situation. How much vodka did I drink? No, don't tell me. What is your name, Shelley? George Stobart, ma'am. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? Uh, good, bad, good, bad. <laughs> no. Yes, yes I am. Let me examine you. Uh, no. No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Mm. Well, that doesn't sound like a terrible idea. Go on then. Is that straight or with ice? Just give me the bottle with a cheat on it. I guess a little drop won't hurt. <laughs> ah, that's better. She knocked back the brandy as if it was water. I was glad I wasn't picking up the check. Oh. <laughs> the pretty young waitress was unconscious. Hey, wake up! She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. Hmm. Okay, maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> Apart from a bit in the middle, the mirror had smashed into a thousand pieces. Bad luck for someone. Can't do anything with it. I hope the fact that the mirror was already broken meant I'd escape the bad luck. <laughs> the mirror had smashed into a thousand. Poor guy. Uh -huh. He was pretty mashed up. Oh, I see. It's behind the table. Okay. sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. Hmm. Yeah, I can pick up the paper. May as well, we, we, we were reading it beforehand. Assassinate Boutour Pierre Cachon. A nation et état de choc. Hmm. Hello. I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah Adin, 1345. Salah Adin, eh? The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnate, shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence, like a regular French statesman. The column was devoted mm. exclusively to rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. The leading article referred to the visit of... Okay, so that's pretty much it. Anything else? Uh... Okay, go this way. The clown had fled into this alley, but there was no sign of the town. Well, the okay, it's probably down in the sewers, knowing our luck. It was an iron cover concealing the entrance to a drain or sewer. Let me guess, you can't pick it up. Oh. 
The cover was too <laughs> heavy and awkward to lift with my bare hands. You weakling. Uh -uh. <laughs> it was a battered old trash can. I yeah, had it with sticking my nose into French. <laughs> Why you expect French in Frenchmen to pump out? Uh... It smelled like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. Lovely. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's have a look at this. There was nothing of interest. Well, that looks about it for me. Yeah. Okay. Guess we go down this way then. Whoa. Oh, right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American <laughs> consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant. Move. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe, march. And also check you over for injuries since you seem to be completely what unscathed. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead? Move. <laughs> oui, monsieur. But I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, <laughs> I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Examine the girl. And take her statement, if you can. Yeah, I seem to have sabotaged you there. Hey, maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. California. Monsieur Stobart. Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Um. Yes, we did. Yes, didn't I we? did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yes, we saw a clown. Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon. The picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is yes, the girl alright, Move. Mm -hmm. She'll live if she survives the hangover. She doesn't remember seeing a clown, monsieur. That's odd. Don't you think, monsieur? Who am I to believe? I wonder. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this you know nothing. does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. <laughs> I honestly believe you are in no danger. <laughs> Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. My card. Which, for some reason, I close my court and then open right. it up again. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Mm-hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. 
No, I wanted to talk to her. What? There we go. Excuse me, Mademoiselle. Hi, uh, my name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off. Sure was. Sat right out in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nico Collard from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? Oh, no, it's a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. <laughs> the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Okay. <laughs> it's him again. Of course, this is now the first of meeting of minds, the great duo that solved the crime. And yet she looks like a startled deer in the headlights. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planta. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. Okay, him again. How did Planta <coughs> use your name? Through the newspaper, La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Plantard said he could supply me with more information. Somehow the clown must have known about our appointment. Hmm. I kind of glossed over the introduction there, so only two murders. Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Have you seen Rosso? Is he here? And he's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. Yeah. Hmm. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Oh. Why won't you tell me about the clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. Oh, well, hey. You help me with my story, and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Of course. Okay, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be on soon with you. Uh, fine. Uh, I'll see you soon. Develop? You mean this is pre-digital? No one develops pictures these days. So what we got. Oh, but a cute photojournalist. Did he give her a number? <laughs> the card read Augustin Rosso and gave an address to the south of the Montparnasse Cemetery. Except I don't have it in my inventory. It was a Paris daily tabloid newspaper full of sex, scandal, and sports results. Uh -huh. Okay. See what this guy says. Hey, you! I thought you'd been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics by quite a bunch, you know. He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You, a terrorist? Ha! He was only <laughs> doing his duty, I guess. Hey. I can. Give things? Okay. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Girl beat. I could have knocked his block off. Okay. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Planta. Was? He's dead then? Yeah. That's too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. Regret and remorse are strange emotions. They really bring out the hammiest actors in people. 
clown? Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big <laughs> red nose. Ho! Oh, those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. No, I love the far circus, scary. That's why we don't see horses. clowns anymore. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Yes. Some of us have to work for a living. Uh huh. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already. I didn't see a thing. He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. It'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. Very true. Listen, I have to find that clown. He's a killer. Dun dun dun. Bang. Who are you anyhow? A cop? No, it's starting to feel like it. I mean, do I look like a cop? <laughs> no, but you act like one. Sticking your nose in where it's not wanted. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. I wondered what that bang was. Any bodies? Yes, I just told yeah. you. An old man was killed. Man. I Ooh. didn't think it was that serious. Naughty language. What about the waitress? Oh, she's fine. Thank the saints. <laughs> um hmm, okay. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Yeah, moan, 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 moan. Ah, look at these damn bleeding out liberals. Cha! Ah, save the dolphins. Catch them and eat them, I say. Yum. All that fuss over a bunch of fish. <laughs> ah, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. Hey. Like champagne bottle corks. No. <laughs> ah, what's this? Saleh Dean running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend. Bucephalus reborn, mon ami. Like a streak of lightning she is. Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that night. Listen, buddy. You can, you can keep your eye on your own hole. Help yourself. That's it. Just walk very slowly off the edge of the screen. Bye. Ooh, tools. I'd found just what I wanted. A tool for lifting manhole covers. I know. Dramatic flourish. Hooray! Oh, I can call Nico. Okay. It's a phone. Alright. Uh, well, I don't need to call Nico, do I? I haven't got anything to tell her. Hey, baby. Wanna come with me down a hole? Alright. It was an iron cover concealing the entrance to a drain or sewer. Okay. Open sesame. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. Instead, it turned out to be a tunnel. I gasped at my complete misunderstanding of the situation. Ooh. So a little bit. What's this over here? It looks, looks like red. The red nose. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. Uh -huh. uh, oh, I can go this way. Okay. Uh huh. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast left. Oop, didn't mean to do that. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. Mm hmm. Hi there. 
called it right there. You, you swear, right? <laughs> I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there, immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. No way. You stink. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? Um, A clown? I was looking for a clown. Huh. Ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He yes. planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Yeah, and then oh, here. Yo, that is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon dieu! Then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Yeah, about five minutes ago, you prat. That does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. Yeah. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh... Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type, <laughs> just like you. Uh, okay, so he's not really going to talk to me, is he? Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, hey, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, bit hungover. I'll take you a drink. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. <laughs> ah, that's what you say. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. Mm. I'm gonna find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Bravo! Huh? You need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those uh, stupid sneakers. Sneakers? They're brown. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave? Or do I have to call the police? Hmm. Um. There's no point in showing him that. Maybe I'll show him this. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Aha! Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoid Division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your your poise. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? <laughs> okay, so we have to basically ask him these questions again. Tell me about the man you apprehended. He was a mean one this year. He grabbed me in an unlock. His face, suddenly next to mine, his grip was like fire. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. <laughs> Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Can't suspect her, ah, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, sir. I know her quite well, you would say. And she uh. came to work at the cafe oh, well, six, seven months ago. I look forward all week 
<laughs> Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Okay. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there okay. anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not as soon. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. Yeah, and talking to an absolute genius. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little trick with numbers that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's mm. incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Or do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. Me too. Okay. I have to be going. Thanks to your help. The citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Raymond, I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. So the clown had escaped into the sewer, come up into the courtyard, and then slipped back into the street here. It wasn't much, but it was more than the cops had done. Okay. Let's call Nico. Well, call. We could call Nico or we could call this person. Who's this person? Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No. No. That's not possible. Oh, okay. Uh, forget it. Listen. All I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. <laughs> there are innocent <laughs> lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. <laughs> lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. Hmm. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? 
I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you'll be, but sure I am. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man. Don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't <laughs> have a dog. What do you think? I don't know Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. I guess it's goodbye then. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Yeah. Asshole. Okay. Cool little lady. Hello, Nico Kulad. Hello? It's George. Ah, oh, wait. George, hello. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment later this afternoon? Uh, hey fine. now. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come over. I was used to working alone, but I had to admit it felt good with George on the case too. But there were some things I was going to have to do alone, and fast. I needed the answers to some questions. Who was the costume killer? And why did he murder Carchon? Why did Carchon ask for me to interview him? How did he know my father? And why was my editor so scared? There was some kind of secret war going on out there, but who was on which side? One thing I did know, I wasn't going to get the answer sitting at my desk. Hmm, and why was I so trusting of a man I barely knew? This and other mysteries I had to unravel.